So I had a pookie boy comment on one of my videos talking about black men have more options than black women. Like, let's be real here. Y'all are only going out of the country because y'all can't find a sucker in the U.S. Y'all basically have to go out of the country to find y'all selves a woman because the women in the U.S. don't even want y'all anyway. But y'all claim that y'all have more options, right? YouTube, it's your boy, the Passport Bro Wingman, coming at you again with another YouTube video. And the title of this video is called, A Sucker, Passport Bros, is what you are searching for in women in South America, says Lost Lady. And the video you just saw was a woman critiquing the Passport Bros, and she had a lot of negative things to say. And I believe this woman had posted a video sometime back, when she was wearing like a, a hair bonnet at the time. Um, but, but either way... Um, she has some talking points that I hear a lot of different women on YouTube critique the Passport Bros about. So I wanted to talk to some of those negative critiques and debunk a lot of them and give my feedback on that whole situation. So anyway, uh, some of her video, she pretty much was saying that, um, as you heard, that we're pretty much deceiving the women overseas. Um, they're pretty much suckers. And the re reason we're going over there is because no woman here wanted us. That kind of thing. So I kind of wanted to talk to that because um, what a lot of women and, and even some, I hate this, which is so strange, a lot of men have to say it about the passport bros is they say, okay, so what happens when you meet this woman, you bring her back to the stage and she finds out that you're not a, a millionaire, you know, then what happens? Then she feels like, I guess, according to this woman, she's going to feel like a sucker. She got played. You presented yourself a certain way, but it turns out that you're not actually that way. So, um, few things about this um first off um it's actually not the women overseas that are deceived it's actually the women in this country that are deceived and a few things i want to uh, talk about first off um most most immigrant families that come to the united states those families tend to be more those marriage couples tend to be more stable than than the marriages in the united states and what i mean by that is all these people coming from the southern border that that go into the United States, consider the fact that those women are married to men that don't make that much. That their man is probably some guy, and I want to stereotype, but in many of these countries, two thirds of the economy is is really built on, um, you know, uh, low wage jobs like you know Uber, uh, street vending, you know that kind of thing where the pay is not guaranteed. So in many cases. A lot of the women are married to these type of men. And what you notice is when those women come over the border and they're married to these men, there's no mass exodus of these men, of these women leaving their husbands. That doesn't happen. They tend to stay to stick together at a, uh, I believe it was like, yeah, I want to say it was a 60% rate versus the United States. It's like 52%. And even that, uh, and, and pretty much what that's saying, that's saying is that um, in spite of them having less income and less educational skills, um, those women still stick by their men at a higher rate than the women in America. And, you know, here, I mean, there's like I'm not going to say there's jobs everywhere, but we have plenty of money co in comparison to some of these other countries. So that's the first thing you got to consider. So that tells you there's a cultural difference in the states in Western countries versus in other countries. They actually in other countries, they really, really respect marriage and relationships. They don't have the money that Americans have. So what they do is. They find other we, other ways to you know find life you know um, you know gratifying. And they do that by investing in people, investing in their friends, investing in family, investing into like their husbands, into their children. So they've built up in a culture of generation after generation doing that. So when they come here, it's not all about materialism. Yeah, people are coming here to get jobs, but what you don't know, well, what you don't know is that a lot of those people are getting money here and they're sending it back home. They're not they're not necessarily here because they wanna they wanna um, be within the culture what you'll find a lot of times even for people that come from like some of these um you know like muslim countries or these other countries what you'll find out when they come here to the states what they do is they set up a little shop might be like a 7-eleven something like that and um what you're gonna notice is they hire like all their relatives and they pretty much they, for the most part they don't really deal with a lot of americans you know, a lot of them don't really like the culture here. They like the money, but they don't necessarily like the culture. So a lot of times they're making money here to send money back home or to live off, you know, their um, success here. But they don't necessarily indulge in American culture. They like to keep their culture intact. So in, in addition to that, um, as I said before, 
Um, I believe in the black community, I think uh, one in three black women will be married. And then when they looked at even white women, which at one point they were trying to say it was um, one in two. But they said after the boomer generation goes away, that drops down to one in three, just like in the black community. So I say to say that um, a lot of these women, I, I, they, they're not really looking at the stats when they're talking about when they're passing over all these decent men that are trying to be their suitor and trying to like, you know, the, the you know, the decent guys that they pass over when these guys are really trying to, um, you know, uh, shoot their shot at them and, you know, and show their interest. A lot of the women are turning these men down, not aware that these men are just really, really good men that can make stable husbands and build them a stable life. And the thing is, the women in other countries, they can quickly pick up on it. They quickly pick up on this. And the reason a lot of the American women are kind of deceived and unfortunately they pass over a lot of good men is, you know, as we all know, in the way the matrix is built up, they kind of um, they're pretty much deceived. For example, uh, there was a study that came out that tried to say that in the near future, there was going to be all these lonely men because they looked at the apps and they saw that a lot of men weren't getting that many hits on the apps. So they were saying that this was going to build a culture of single lonely men. And uh, as I said before, nothing is further from the truth. What they don't also know is that a lot of those men on those sites, some of these men are married men, you know, and then even some of the men that use the apps, it's not like they only use the, as we know, most men, in, a lot of men in general, you know, not just black men, but white men in general, we kind of know that using like Tinder, Instagram, those kind of things, it's kind of a, um, it's kind of a dead end, you know, um, a lot of the men, as our, as, including ourselves, we learn to travel, find other means to meet women. A lot of the women on Tinder, and we find out, are just there for like likes and people swiping them, but they have no real intention of dating some of the men. So a lot of men have kind of recognized this. So that's kind of a false study. Not only that, the woman who wrote that study, which you're going to find out later, she posted an article that said, talked about how empowering it is for black women to be single mothers. Pushing, um, encouraging women to basically be single mothers and talk and talking to them about how empowering it is. And uh, and a lot of women, unfortunately, they feed into that. And um, to add to that, um, I was on um, I was working with Pablo Frescobar and shout out to him. Um, we was having a discussion about um, anyway, he posted he posted this video that O'Shea Duke Jackson showed in which this um, there was this black woman that went to Africa and she got into this dispute with this African man. And the man basically, as she was trying to ignore him, he put his hands on her face and made her look at him while he was talking to her. She said, and then she tried to pull away from him. He was holding on her. She said the more aggressive he, she got, the more aggressive he got. And then suddenly she realized that she wasn't an American anymore. There's no big matrix government support behind her. None of that. You're just out here in the wild now. You know, the law is not that effective in these other countries outside of the U.S. So she realized what she was. And very quickly then it, it, it was ingrained in her that I need to soften up. I need to change my energy. At that point, she started acting more feminine to get him to calm down. So the thing is, the women in these in, in, in um, big truck reviews, um, shout out to him. He made a very interesting point. When we were having that chat. He said um, it's going to it's going to take to the women in America get down to the last government program, that last bit of food stamps, that last bit of public housing before they realize, oh, shoot, I, I need a man. You know, the, the, the way things are structured, you know, if if suddenly the dollar were to crash or there was some type of huge um, epidemic again, like COVID 3.0, suddenly at that point, they're going to realize the value of having a stable man who has a stable job and can provide for them. Cause during the COVID, as you notice, a lot of people were losing jobs. The economy was doing bad. Every the price, of everything was going up. You couldn't find certain supplies. So you had all these women in these stores and they look into the left and right. And there's no man beside them. They don't have Chad with them. Cause he's with some other woman at that point. They suddenly realized they had a small snapshot of how important it was to have a man. And here's the difference. This is why I say that the foreign women are not deceived. They're in the fire every day. They're in the fire every day. They don't have all the programs we have. They don't have they don't have like, as I said before, a lot of people would say, you know, if you if you look it up while there there is um, some type of programs there. But keep in mind that 
there's a lot of violence there and a lot of times because of the violence people have to move from city to city they move away to fa they move away from family they move into areas where they have no family no friends there and most of the comedy as i said before is made is is made up of low paying jobs such as street vending such as like I said uber um and when you move to another city in, in those countries, because you don't pay directly into like uh, tax benefits, they don't get a lot of those programs. And in addition to that, those jobs that they're working, money is not guaranteed. And just consider when COVID happened, people didn't have money. They couldn't go out. So you couldn't really make any money. So at that point, you're com you're 100 percent dependent on the government to take care of you. And those governments, they don't have the money that the United States have. And in fact, I don't know if you know this, but the U.S. dollar has been gaining a lot of a lot of um, way against these other currencies. Like the Colombian peso has been like constantly decreasing while inflation is constantly increasing in those countries. And this is across, across the board in several of these countries, you, especially Argentina. Their, their peso is constantly crashing against the U.S. dollar. So that being said, currencies, their value of their money is going down even though they're working more hours. But the cost of goods is constantly going up. It's, even in Cuba, they, they didn't have access to certain um, basic you know goods such as like lotions, toothpaste, these kind of things. When you get yourself in those situations, you know you know, you then you then found the, find the value of having a guy who has a strong drive, who is a thinker, who had who who knows how to see opportunity, take advantage of it, who knows how to work hard, who who sees that you're in a, a very crappy situation and says we're going to do better than this, can keep her encouraged, provide her some leadership. At that point. Those women truly value those type of men. They value those men over the Pookie and Ray Rays or the dusty, you know, bar, you know, the dusty guys that, you know, for the most part, just want to, you know, play PlayStation all day. Don't really want to do anything, you know, um, you know, the, the Pookie and Ray Rays. You, you understand what I'm saying? Like at that point, those women find value in men who are of means or are stable. And as I said before, in these other countries, there's a huge gap between the have and the have nots. In fact, I believe in Colombia, they said 55 percent of the income there comes from only about, I believe, the top by the top 20 percent of people in that country. Top 20 percent, top 20 percent, uh, they receive 55 percent of the income in that country, which means you got a huge amount of people in there that not really make any money. Uh, barely surviving. I believe um, when COVID happened, at one point people were having three meals. They had to actually go down to two meals. There were even some people that were, on, that were only eating about once per day. So things get very severe there. And, and in those countries, when they find a man who's of stable means that can provide for them, they really go after that man. They're really attracted to that man. So when Passport Bros, we come down to these countries, we are men that have stable jobs. We come from a stable economy, a stable country. We're um, inspired. We got a lot of positive energy because we've seen a lot of positive things. We're able to provide, you know, we're able to provide for the women that we, you know, that we love, we, that we take care of, that we're dating. We're able to treat them well, bond with them well. We, we don't take them for granted. You know, um, the other thing is a lot of men there, they have certain preferences because they have so many options there, especially men of any means. Even the street vendor guy who has options because he has income, even he, even he can be kind of picky. So, a lot of times they're passing over women for simple things like they don't like a woman that has curly hair or they don't like a woman who is um, has somewhat of a tan. But as you know, as you know, a lot of us passport bros, I actually like the tans. I actually like the curly hair, you know, so so when you so the women, when they come down and they see that you're attracted to these traits, it's kind of like it's kind of a win win for both of us, you know. So that's why she's saying, oh, you know, you're pretty much you're a sucker. They're suckers because the women he in the United States don't want the men that they're picking up but if you think about it is that it also could be the opposite as well that we're picking up some of the women that some of the men there don't necessarily care for they they, they might not necessarily some of the men in these other countries they they might not necessarily care for women who have you know curly hair or you know uh, or like brown skin or like dark skin or you know it could be in some cases it might be women who are kind of thick got curves they prefer like the the really thin like uh mod, you know very very thin uh type of women but we especially myself as you know uh, as a black man i i tend to like curves and butts and that kind of thing so i gravitate to those women versus some of the men in these countries they might actually want to go away from these women but that's not me but that but i don't consider myself a sucker most of passport bros we won't consider ourselves ourselves suckers for dating these women we actually 
I'm like I said, it's kind of a, a win-win for both for us and also for the women. And um, at the end of the day, the people that's really going to lose, as I said before, is going to be a woman in the West because they're losing out on a lot of stable men. Because here's the thing. She's trying to say that those women are going to come back here and realize, oh, I got me this broke man. Keep in fact that a plane ticket to Brazil, the cheapest you're going to get, and I, the cheapest you're going to get, and you're talking about like a red-eye flight, is probably around $700, $800. And that does not include hotel stay. You need money to party. You need money to eat. You know, you need money for taxis. Um, they're not. They're not even including that. Especially men who fly to like the Philippines or Thailand. Man, that that plane ticket could be twelve hundred dollars, thirteen hundred dollars. And again, that does not include accommodation. So, so the men that these foreign women are meeting, they're not broke men. If anything else, they're men who have their income. They have stable income. They have their finances in order. So when these women get back to the States or the West, if if the men decide to bring it back, I know that the, the golden rule is generally if you can, don't bring them back. Try to keep them in their natural environment. That way the American culture doesn't eat away at her culture. You know, but even for the men who do decide to bring them back, what I'm saying is they're, those women are coming back with men who have either the either stable means, they have drive, they have some things going for them. They're not, you know, not necessarily maybe they're not might not necessarily be rich, but they're very well off. And um, and I mean, and, and, and I said it to say that because a lot of women, they feel like, well, I can't work with those men. They don't have that much money. But but the thing is, most people in the United States, the average salary is only about uh, I believe only about like forty thousand dollars. And I think one guy in my comments has said that's actually not even the real um Salary is actually lower because he was saying they take into account all the billionaires. But once you remove a lot of the billionaires, that average salary actually goes down. I think he was saying to about like thirty thousand. Like so, the average person only really makes about, if you if, ex excluding the billionaires, only about like thirty thousand a year, which is not that much. So most people don't even make that much. I think only about ten percent make over a hundred grand. That's including all men, including men who are in their fifties, sixties, seventies. You know, so it's not you know. So a lot of guys coming straight out in their twenties, they're not going to be making necessarily. Uh, 100 grand 200 grand a year it's not gonna happen so um you know so and of course this, these are women who are chasing the chads and tyrones and that kind of thing although the woman in the video um she's pretty average looking i mean but you know obviously she's one of these women that like um i'm gonna take a guess and say if it's not a pookie and ray ray it's probably some type of simpish guy that's letting her where the pants a relationship and run all over him if she even has a man she might because sometimes these are women who don't even have men they're just mad and they're just hating on the fact that we're leaving and they want to have something negative to say and it could be the fact that we're leaving and as a result she has no safety net and what a uh and what they um was it i guess that would be a 60 percent chance that she's probably not gonna be married if one in three if only one in three black women are getting married so a lot of them really hate to see us going. They really hate to see that. They prefer us to stay here on a plantation. And the fact that she even produced another video already shows you where her mind is. If we're that bad, you know, she would just move on and leave us alone. But she's here still produ producing videos. So that's my take on this whole situation. Um, you know, the women, at the end of the day, the foreign women are the winners. And I hate to say it, but a lot of women in the States, not all of y'all, because you do have the pick me's and I feel really bad for you. You women who who really, really get it and you really, really want a good man. So we're not talking about you. I would say a lot of you women are more of the minority. I'm talking about the other delusional women. Those women, unfortunately, tend to be the suckers. And, and I'm not. And, and it's, it's because the West has really suckered them for the most part. They they've gotten them feed into this false narrative about men in general and about them and about their status in, in comparison to men they really have just you know unfortunately they just hoodwinked them and, it, and it's gonna it, unfortunately it's gonna come down to them winding up in their late 30s 40s and then they look into the right and left and there's no more men because the men that would have been their safety nets have been you know have uh opened their eyes to the game we've moved on we've become passport bros we're traveling we're, we're exploring our options and on that note i'm going to end this this video is getting pretty long, so tell me what you think in the comment section. Um, please subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and until next time, this is the Passport Bro Wingman signing off.